If you speak poorly, word will spread. The good news is if you speak well, word will spread. Well, we're going to provide you with some structure and some preparation so that you speak well. And I want to add a caveat, whether you are doing a two-minute Toastmaster table talk, whether you're doing a 10-minute student presentation, whether you're making a sales presentation, a keynote, leading a workshop for a couple hours, or a personal development seminar for a couple days, preparation is key. Here's the caveat. You need to be flexible. It was a number of years ago that I was in Boyle, Alberta. 400 staff of a school district were collected in the community center. I was introduced as the morning keynoter. I began about 15 minutes into the talk. The MC came up on the platform and whispered in my ear, Patricia, please keep them in their seats. I'll wave to you when you can let them out of their chairs. The toilets have all exploded. They're broken. It was like minus 40 degrees outside. That one hour keynote turned into one hour and 40 minutes. Good thing I had extra content prepared in here in my head. Then think about this one in Tabor, Alberta at a women's conference, about 200, 250 women, closing keynote. We need to be out of the building at four o'clock, so make sure you end on time, Patricia, the MC said. Well, at three o'clock, we were to start. I was to start my one hour keynote, but they decided to give away the door prizes they had left over. It was 310, 320. And I'm saying, okay, what can I let go of? What can I let go of? 3.30, 3.40. That one hour keynote ended up being delivered in 18 minutes. So I'm going to give you ways to collect content, structure it, deliver it. And remember, you'll need to be flexible. Yes, what do we think? Ta-da! So where are we going? You were sent uh, a handout. I want you to put that handout in front of you so you can come along with me on this half hour ride. Ready? And away we go. Sex, successful presentations keep them awake. And my intention is to keep you awake and you can let me know. Please send any comments on what you like or questions in the chat room. And here we have the first point that's on your handout. Identify ineffective and effective presentations. No doubt you have been the victim of a poor presentation, and you've probably also been the delighted recipient of an upbeat, effective presentation. I want you to choose one word and put it in the chat room. Manisha is very good at reporting for us. Put one word in the chat box of an ineffective presentation that you have endured. Hopefully it wasn't you presenting. <laughs> Sometimes the most ineffective presentations I've experienced was me delivering and then I learned from it. What are some of the words, Manisha? Um, so boring, uh -huh. monotone, yes. mo monotone again, rambling, ah, 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 e, a, uh, repetitive, yes. full of text, full of text slides. Oh, expletives, yes disconnected themes no audience engagement no audience again oh i covered that one already fantastic no i no eye contact no eye contact reading Tricky. from a text yes let me just talk about eye contact for a minute yes the eye contact uh, is tricky I've, i'm trying to train my eyes to look into the camera and especially in this um, powerpoint format where you end up in a little box, it makes it doubly tricky. So your slides, if you're going to use slides, need to be interesting and um, dynamic. What other words, Manisha? Words, words, and words, hardly any engagements. 
Thank you. All right, well, I've obviously am speaking to an informed group of people. Now, second, tell me some words, one word, just one word, of effective. When you've experienced an effective presentation, what has been your experience? If you walked away and said, yes, that was well worth my time and Engaging. my attention. Engaging. Engaging. Entertaining, engaging, clear, uh, clear, clear, enthusiasm, enthusiasm, oh, enthusiasm, okay, enthusiastic, okay, enthusiasm speaker, stimulating, um, share, um, goal oriented, thought provoking. When the presenter is able to cue in the audience and knows how to be able to bring up the energy. Bring up the energy. Yes. Again, Eng very tricky online. Engaging. And engaging. Right. Ideas. 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 Excellent. Engaging is a very tricky word because we use that word a lot, but how do we engage? And I will be giving a bonus at the end that has a document with ways to engage and my intention also is to model engaging, engaging. And the word enthusiasm came up a number of times and people often worry, especially students, about freezing or forgetting their lines. The number one requirement is for you to come to your audience with enthusiasm to support them and to provide information that you feel enthused about. I'm going to add Arrogance. Patricia, there are some <laughs> other awesome comments. Dynamic, organized, likable. Okay, organized, organized and likable. Right. Again, uh, organized, we can we can tell whether we're being organized or not. I w I'm just going to go backtrack a little bit here. We're talking about e effective. Um, likable, I want you, if you're going to do much presenting, to be prepared for people not to like you. That's been the hardest part for me. I like to be liked, but to expect people, your audience, to like you is setting yourself up for a problem because you may remind them of an Aunt Dorothy that they didn't like or an old girlfriend or an old boyfriend that they didn't like. So likable is an interesting quality that may cause you problems if that's what you set yourself up for but of course be friendly i'm just want to add that uh, from my experience the speaker that comes on stage with arrogance and it's all about me 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 i i i uh, is a put down for me and the other one is somebody who's talking about a very hard topic but actually has not done their own personal work to get over the emotionality of whatever it is that they are wanting to change in the world, whether it's maybe somebody who was adopted and their life didn't work out. This platform in front of an audience is not the place to do your therapy. And I like all of the lists that we came in. Here's uh, my example of an effective speaker. This is a colleague of mine for many, many years, 20 years, Michael Kerr. And of course, his topic also puts him in a place to be likable, engaging, fun, and memorable in that he does speak about humor at work. He's a humor at work consultant. Michael once told me that there are three reasons that a presentation does not go well, and I'll never forget it. The first reason is that the venue is is challenging. The venue, you might have a room where the acoustics is poor. You might have a venue where there's pillars so that people can't see. You might be, uh, I've had to present in basements of a church. So I would travel to a small community and find out that I was in a dark basement where people could hardly see me and the lighting was dreadful. Um, school gymnasiums were the acoustics are echoing so that's one number two is that you're in you are in front of the wrong audience 
And that's happened to me over the years, maybe every other year, I agreed to be in front of the wrong audience. One time it was a group of trades guys, and I just not did not relate to them. And the third is that the speaker is not prepared and did not do a good job. So take that into consideration. You also want to identify who your audience is, just like when I was in front of those tradespeople, I should not have been. I should have said, no, that's not a good audience for me. And on your handout, you have just a few questions of, is, is uh, your audience expecting a formal presentation? Is it a casual presentation? Are they feeling energized? Is it the morning and they've had they've had breakfast served to them? Or is it, I've seen conferences where they went on till six o'clock and then they bring on a speaker and people are hungry and they're tired and the speaker, it's a setup for failure for that speaker. Are the, is the audience there voluntarily or are they forced? Uh, it's very different to have people that are keen to hear the message that are excited about coming and coming voluntarily and their teacher or their manager said they had to. So are they keen learners or are they what we call a prisoner? So this is, those are all useful questions for you to be asking and maybe name the elephant in the room if say there's their students and you might wanna say something like, wow, you've had a long day and you've had to work hard. I sure hope we can put some fun in our time together so that you're not having to um, fight what hasn't been named. I think that's, a, I think that's about it. Uh, do think about what's the right audience for you and the, your message and who you are. And we'll talk a little bit about more of that when we talk about establish your credibility, your credibility to lead other people in their thinking and their behavior. So you want to ask yourself, why you to this audience? Women audiences are a really good fit for me. Obviously, I'm a woman, a mother, a grandmother. And actually, four years ago, my granddaughter made me a great grandmother. So that's a really good audience for me. I'm also an adoptive mother. So I speak, I've spoken to a lot of um, organizations where adoption, I've gone on retreats with foster parents. They're a really good audience for me. I'm also a therapist. And so speaking to helping professionals about stress management, about boosting resilience in clients, good fit for me. So why you to this audience? And what do you have that's common with this audience? And you can bring that up. What I have common with you is we are all interested in presenting and speaking clearly and in a more engaging manner. And why this subject? So you might want to say, why this subject? And Manisha did an excellent job of asking you to put in the chat room your connection with uh, Indigenous culture, as well as what brought you to this session about presentation skills. And what's, it is a really good question, and you've got it to fill in the blank. It's a common one in uh, sales and in presentation skills is what's in it for them to hear you to speak to come to sit to give up their time what is the benefit the value and i think when somebody uh, put in the chat room what an effective presentation is it i think the word was either value or points yes people want to take away some value giving up their time, which has become one of the most precious commodities that we have. So if you turn the page on your handout to page three, we have name your objectives. And this is very important to establish what are your intentions for your audience. Name your objectives. What do you want your audience to know and remember? There are so many perspectives and so many resources of a presentation skills that for our time together, I certainly needed to narrow down all the options, what I wanted you to know and to remember. And what did I want you to feel? It's fine to know something, but I want you to feel enthusiastic. 
I want you to feel excited. I want you to feel confident about the next time you speak. That's part of my objective of putting this together and some of the resources I'll be offering you at the end. What I want you to do, I want you to prepare as well as be prepared to be able to be flexible to the challenges that may happen. And another objective maybe, which has to do with engagement is to provide a little entertainment for our engagement purposes, or in some cases, actually, it happens rarely for me, but there have been about once a year, I have been hired to primarily entertain through story delivery and acknowledgement and the uplifting of the audience. These objectives provide for you the foundation of your thinking and your preparation. The next step will be to collect content. And as I said before, there's masses of content. And I've put on point uh, four on your handout. Uh oh, collect your content. Um, I have my numbers. You just notice one, two, three, four, five. I have made a little boo boo. So I want everybody to put in the chat room. It's okay to learn. It's okay to make mistakes. That's what I want. Then when I have my audience, I have them. It's okay to make mistakes. Then I can learn from them. So a little misnumbering here. It says four on the screen, but it says five on your handout on page three. It's okay to learn from my mistakes and it's okay to make mistakes. And that feels good when I hear from my audience. It's okay to make mistakes. Because it wasn't okay when I was growing up. That may be the case for you too. All right. Thank you for doing that. Did I get any support, Manisha? Oh, yes, yes. Um. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. It's okay to make mistakes. All right. When you collect your content, it must support your main points. And your main points are come from your objectives. What do you want people to uh, know, to feel, to do, right? I want you to get your pens ready because I'm going to go through these categories, a number of categories of content quite quickly. They need to, you need to choose content, as I said, that supports your points, are relevant to your audience, and answer what's in it for them. And away we go. So facts statistics and research and too many presentations have too much of this depending on the time no more than maybe one fact statistic research per 10 to 15 minutes questions provocative questions so i asked you at the, up at the beginning about one word what would you answer to one word for ineffective presentations and effective presentations. And that was to reinforce that you already are quite knowledgeable about what an effective and an ineffective presentation is. Quotations. Please be careful about using old, tired quotations that we've heard over and over and over again. Try to find ones that are interesting and, of course, support the point. A presentation is a means of communication, which can be, um, oops, I have to backtrack, I made a little error again. So we're on C, definitions, definitions, provide definitions for any of your key points. A presentation is a means of communication, which can be adapted to various speaking situations. And now we're getting to quotations, quotations, um, books, internet, are filled with quotations. Find one that's interesting and new for you and will be new and interesting for your audience. This is by Ellen Finkelstein, who's an expert on slide decks. She says, bullets kill good presentations. Instead of using bullets, I'm using a full slide. Fables, fables um, are old and true, but make them fresh. 
connect a fable, say, of the turtle and the, the tortoise. Turtle, turtle, tortoise, the turtle and the hare. Now I got it. The turtle and the hare. Make it personal. Tell a story about how you thought you were behind and then you won or how somebody else was ahead or behind. Make it personal. Anytime you use stories, see if you can link it to a personal story to make it more interesting. Uh, speaking of stories, here is a young woman who has so many stories and I, she's one of my heroes. Malala, if you don't know about her, please write down this name and Google her. She uh, was nominated for a Peace Prize. Um, she was shot in the face for going to school as a girl, and now she advocates for girls all over the world to go to school. Use case studies, provide examples of your, what your point is. Provide repetition and restatement so that you can reinforce learning. And it could be just to stop and to say, what is the best point that you have heard so far? If you're able to keep listening to me and write that, what has been the best point so far that you've heard so far in this presentation in the chat room? Activities and exercises can be part of you putting your content together. Analogies. She is as fickle as a butterfly is an analogy, while a metaphor is she has the heart of a butterfly. If you don't know the difference between those two words, analogy and metaphor, merely Google it. A poem. This is the most famous poem in all the world. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. And I have a presentation called Merry Lovemaking where I took the poem and I adjusted it a little. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways to the sound of the toilet seat going down. Rhymes can be played with. He died from reading PowerPoint that sent him to the heavenly joint. Now this is a little experiment. Get ready. This is another piece of content. So you can take um, music lyrics. I uh, don't suggest that you sing to your audience if you have a tendency to be off tune or it's painful for you or painful for the audience. But if you don't mind having a little fun, I took the old gray mare and turned it into we old folks, we ain't what we used to be for my senior audiences. Comparisons, what's the same, what's different? And we all have a humor bone, whether you know it or not. And using images can add some humor if you're using a slide deck. So can using uh, props bring some, some humor to a presentation. And I, also in the resource that I'm going to offer you at the end are ideas for adding humor. Now I'm noticing the time. And if you want to put in the chat room a couple other ideas for content, great. But I'm going to move on to, and again, my headline. I made another error here. This is step three. This is actually on page four, structure your content. And to structure your content, you take all of what you've collected and you put it into an open, a body, and a close. On your handout, it makes really, really clear some of the best options for an opening is using a rhetorical the Yeah, in the open is using a rhetorical question, an activity, an invitation, a story, right away include the audience as quickly as you can and it must support your main point your main point that you're making presentation skills can be learned it's the main point of this 
and then we've got all of these sub points on your handout so number number six and then when we come to the body of your presentation you have sub points and then you provide support content and this, we've just talked about all the different content and then how to apply that content is usually in the body as well and when you come to the close you reinforce the main point now how do you decide how much for what time you're given and you again have to be flexible but in tony robbins ted talk he spoke so many words and it's important for you to know how many words you have that's why we write a script it's important to have that before you start doing your practice so please put in the chat room your guess at how fast you think tony robbins spoke during his ted talk it's a 20 minute talk that's the limit for ted talks and what are some of the numbers that are coming in, Manisha? Which window is it? Window one, window two, number three, or the number? It doesn't matter. Uh, the number three. Number three. Yeah, number. so people, people are pretty smart. They know that Tony Robbins speaks very, very quickly. So congratulations. Yes. The average conversation, when we're just having a conversation, we speak at 120 to 150 words a minute. Tony Robbins. Robbins 201. Wow. The average TED talk is 173 words a minute. I averaged out mine when I'm speaking professionally, and it's between 140 and 150 minutes. Well, it's useful to know how fast you speak. You can simply clock yourself by looking, timing yourself um, on your iPhone. You put the script together and you have a rough idea that about 120 words are going to be one minute. And that will help you when you're preparing, right? And you've got to watch the clock and you need to stop on time, which uh, I'm noticing I need to stop right soon here. And then you practice. Joining Toastmasters is a wonderful arena for practice. Toastmaster clubs are now meeting online during this time. Ready? So I'm uh, offering to send a, this is my email. It's on the handout. If you didn't happen to get the handout, please write down my email address, Patricia at Solutions for Resilience. And you will receive, um, it's a Presentation Skills 101 resource document with ways to energize your audience, how to add humor, very, some very simple tips, um, how to craft a simple story, I hope you noticed that I uh, opened with a story about those two presentations. It included dialogue. It included an opening and an ending, although they were very short stories, they were still crafted. And how to manage nerves for those people that are concerned about that and some other tips and resources, including uh, excellent books and some online resources. Fantastic. Okay. Whoops, I better go back there just in case somebody wants to write my uh, email address. And notice you do not have to be perfect. I got my numbers mixed up on my slide deck and my learning guide. But don't spend time apologizing, but you can don't you also want to name the elephant in the room. I, I do uh, people have had time to write that down. I do want to close that sometimes we need to take risks for the benefit of the people who follow us and the people who uh, would benefit from us taking a risk to make our message known i spoke to lifers years ago and my daughter helped me practice saying some swear words to get their attention and these were people that had committed murder i was in a room with 30 of them and guards around the outside of the room and I ended up weaving into my opening presentation, uh, swearing at them. And then I said, we can cut your hair, put clean clothes on you, and you can go to job interview and blow it. And uh, later, I told that story to a room full of 200 plus professional speakers. And I did not, when I was telling the story, I did not use the swear words because it was not appropriate for that audience. So I used this line. 
You mother, you sock, sucking mother truckers. I hope you're laughing. That's the other thing, you don't get feedback on this platform. So take risks, be prepared for all kinds of surprises and being willing to be, uh, yeah, flexible and take the risk. You do not have to do it perfectly. You know enough, you are enough, and we wanna hear from you. That's it, Manisha.